Okay, let's talk Amplifone Raster. So, these are described as impossible to fix. And why would you even bother trying? They are a major contributor to why there are not so many remaining Firefox machines today. And the reason for that is one specific part on this board, everything else other than the completely erratic placement of uh, adjustment potentiometers there, there, I don't know, get something to point to, like here, 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 back down in there on the top of this, here's the width coil, kind of silly. The real reason that these all failed is this, the Amplifone flyback. Now, for those who are in the... Uh, arcade community and have seen a number of other more rare and popular games such as Star Wars or uh, Major Havoc. A lot of them came with the Amplifone color vector monitor from Atari and they similarly had a red uh, ultra-tuned flyback that uh, came with them and these ultra-tuned flybacks failed. They failed so spectacularly and so often that they've accrued the nickname Red Dead Flybacks. And uh, they are known for taking other pieces with it because they will light on fire if you're uh, not super careful with them. Apparently the reason for this is that the uh, Amplifone Flybacks had an issue with water in the uh, factory with the wires that they were coating these things with and Something about that just degraded over time and they would all, uh, well, fail spectacularly. So for the vector uh, monitors, there are replacements available for these. The, the vector uh, red flybacks have been reproduced and, uh, and put back together, but since there were so few of these uh, raster amplifones made, in fact they were only made for iRobot, I, I, iRobot and Firefox shipped with them, um, a very few set of uh, crystal castles apparently shipped with the uh, the Amplifone monitor, but not many. Um, they were sort of forgotten about because there just weren't enough around to 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 warrant uh, reproducing uh, these flybacks. But as you can see, there is a new flyback equipped on this chassis, and this is a K seven thousand series flyback which uh, is pretty odd, but thanks to the genius of one uh, K-Lob member, uh, M. Havoc, who I will provide a link to uh, his website in the description, who came up with this hack, I think I may be one of the earlier ones to test it, but this is all his uh, mad science, so I can't take credit for any of it, but hopefully I can uh, show and explain what, what, went, what went on here for the most part. So again, this is a K7000 series uh, reproduction flyback. And what I've gone and done here is the flyback is mounted on a small uh, breadboard that I've drilled holes into. And that breadboard is suspended above the actual surface of the PCB with a number of uh, wires going to it to mount to where the original flyback was. Now, the uh, K7000 has more uh, coils than the original one does, so there are some pins on the 7000 that are not populated. But for the most part, they were apparently compatible, but it did require a few changes to the overall circuit. One of which is the removal of capacitor C34. Um, right now I've got a wire uh, routed through... Uh, the same hole that C34 was, but this is just going to ground. You don't necessarily need to do it here. You can put it wherever you want. The addition of this capacitor here, which is uh, between pins 5 and 2 on this uh, pin out to the, to the neck board. And this is a... It's hard to actually see is a 3.3 uh, UF 250 volt capacitor. I think I just had some of those in a drawer. And the other addition, which is hard to see because it's on the back, is this capacitor, which serves as a new uh, width cap. And this is a 394J 250 
uh, with capacitor, which is uh, appended on to the back of the unit. Other than that, everything is left intact. So now that we've got this in one unit, we're going to try to put it into the cabinet and see how it does. Okay, we're back on the bench after testing, and we've learned some things. One of the things we've learned is that this monitor uh, really does not want to sync. So when I look at the schematics for the uh, Amplifone raster, we do see something, and that is the PLL, or uh, Pulse Logic Loop? Pulse Lock Loop or something? It's responsible for sync. And that's right here. So I looked at it, and... What the actual hell <laughs> is this? It looks like the uh, the actual sync unit is, of course, put into here. But it's got two resistors and what looks like a tiny capacitor hot glued to it. I guess because they didn't want to populate or this is some kind of field hack. I don't know if you can really see that. But you got two resistors that are soldered together. And then whatever that is. I can't actually identify it, and they're all just hot glued on, I assume, together. But that is a very uh, odd hack. I've not really seen that before, so I'm going to try to take those off and replace this, because I've got four uh, NOS versions of this, and I'm hoping will uh, will will help. And these are, of course, uh, CD4046BEs. Uh, these are the RCA versions, but it looks like this has got the Motorola version. There's a document out there, I'll see if I can link it in the description if I remember, that shows part equivalencies for all of these uh, components that Atari used. So, let's, uh, let's get to it, I guess. We're gonna see what we can do.
Okay, so I just replaced a transistor, a power transistor, on the amp raster board, and I noticed that the transistor that was installed in the unit was a Sylvania EGC 163A, which didn't match the specifications in the document, which calls for a 5838 transistor. So I'm not sure which is actually correct. I got a 5839, which is the only thing I could find that I've installed. And uh, I'm about to try to turn this on and see if it doesn't blow up. It does blow. I have a fire extinguisher. And we'll see what happens. Our goal today is to bring the operating voltage up to 120. So here we go. So far, so good. Still curled on the screen. But we are at 113 volts, which is less than I would want. So I would consider this particular experiment to be a failure. Voltage has climbed to 100 and 14.7, and that's where it's decided it wants to camp out. Almost locked the image. Very frustrating. Very close. Ooh, now chaos. I mean, it looks not bad. I know it'll bother you, but like, whoop, go back a little. Like either you're getting this shape hun, or you're getting like an S but I don't see a straight in the middle of that anywhere. Player two test. Oh, uh, something. I saw a fighter pilot kind of, and then it was all wonky. No way it plays a game. No way, play it! Come on, come on, baby! You deserve to play it! Oh my god. Ah! Holy cow. Come on, babe, come on! Play this game! Ah! Uh, it's okay. It's not happy with it, but. I mean, it's kind of working your picky place. I mean, this is some progress. <laughs> Holy cow! It's a little bit, a little bit wonky. It's better than shooting into nothing like we were before. <laughs> <laughs> 